So it's the first league game of the season and we've made some interesting signings including a Champions League, Europa League, Premier League winning Brazilian. But I want this series to be brilliant so roll the new fancy intro. Yes, hello everybody and all. welcome back to the Sunderland Save and let's dive into it. And I said I want this to be one of my best series ever, so I've updated my transition scene. So let's get into it then and here we are in the Sunderland Save and this is going to be good. So we'll first look at the preseason friendlies. We we beat our second 11-2-0, easy as that. We uh, lost to Huddersfield 1-0, not bad actually. We played pretty well, they played a pretty strong team. We beat Darlington 10-0. I wanted to play my strongest team. We got it out there. Smashed them. Hartlepool, a 1-0 win. We lost to Ju Juventus. Zebra. Zebra. 1-1 on penalties. They played a strong team. They made lots of changes as it got into extra time, but they did start with a reasonably strong team. Um, the Penafiel, we beat them in a third-place playoff for the Cup, and we've just beaten Groningen 1-0 in our last friendly with Nathan Broadhead getting the goals. And this is a man who is not going to be playing much football this year because, um, yeah, there's no need for it. Let's go and have a look at the transfers. So the first in that we've made is Ricky Jade Jones on load from Peterborough. We had um, a tall sort of target man striker that we can use a pressing forward. I wanted a quick, speedy goal scorer, and that is what Ricky Jade Jones is. Uh, he comes in loan from Peterborough, so a, a lot of League One team. Yes, yeah, Skybet League One, so a potential rival. I'm not too sure, but we've bought him in on loan. Uh, lots of pace and acceleration, decent finishing, decent composure, advanced forward. It's just what we wanted, something different, something to complement as well what we've got. Allow us to mix it up. If we want to go two up front, we can go with a target man, big man, little man combination. Think Kevin Phillips, Niall Quinn. That's what we're trying to bring back. Next up is another loney, Anthony Alanga. I was not happy with our left-hand side. Again, I've gone for pace. I thought this team is lacking pace, um, and it's also a quite a young team. The next signing will uh, correct that. But Again, full out pace. Pace 19, acceleration 18, dribbling 14, finishing 13, first touch 12. Very highly rated in real life at Man United, Anthony Alanga. He will be taking the left wing spot. He will be our starting left winger. He is let down a little bit by his passing, his vision and his teamwork. He's not going to be the best at releasing the ball. So we're going to play him actually as an inside forward so that he doesn't really have to worry about those sorts of things he's more intent on getting the ball dribbling it with his good dribbling and his pace at the goal and getting a shot off with his good finishing long shots at 12 as well it means he can have a few pops from range we're playing 500 pounds a week to get him in i think it's an absolute bargain and a 20 grand loan fee i think from what I've been looking at in terms of players available there wasn't better than him on the left wing so i'm very happy to bring him in and the third and final player we've brought in so far in this transfer window, an FA Cup winning, Champions League winning, Europa League winning, Premier Division winning, Carabao Cup winning, Brazilian midfielder, it's Ramirez, who is surprisingly good. 34 years old, he is a veteran, he comes in on a one-year deal, he comes in with mentoring in mind, he comes in with keeping it solid in the middle in mind, he comes in with just having this ability to sort of hold it all together in the middle of the park and that is what i thought we were missing to get him in 3.7k a week so it's a little bit much but i think for one year give us that solidity in midfield help us that push for promotion see what we can do but he has had a very good career i mean a lot of it was in brazil benfica chelsea paid big money for him lots of years at chelsea he moved to china when they got all their money but that time at chelsea he has won absolutely everything you can win it's ridiculous he comes with a huge like such a good record confederations cup loads of caps for brazil portugal premier league portugal cup fa cup champions league europa league premier legion carabao cup it's just ri absolutely ridiculous how much he's won and i look forward to seeing him in the middle of the park yeah work rates a little bit low but he can get teamwork good positioning's good He's better than most of the central midfielders in League One. We've got him in Sunderland, and I'm very, very happy about that. And that is it so far. It hasn't been a busy transfer window. All of these before Ricky J. Jones were done before we got here. Um, and there are a number of good deals that have been made in there by the 
boss and Lee Johnson before it before we replaced him. But um, no outs yet. We haven't actually sold anyone. We haven't let anyone go. So the squad is looking maybe a bit bloated. I don't think it's too bad. Uh, we've got quite a number of these lone players that were already here before before we joined. As I said, Nathan Broadhead probably isn't going to get that many games. Um, and, and Leon Dejaku, I'm not too sure. He may get a game here or there. But I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if we've got... Yeah, 2.1 million future fee. I don't think we'll be... I don't think we'll be activating that. I can't imagine Broadhead has got a, a future fee. No, he doesn't. And we probably wouldn't activate it anyway. The other loanies we've got then that we're starting here is Hoffman, the goalkeeper. Our first choice goalkeeper actually on loan from Bayern Munich of, uh, of all clubs, which is impressive. And we can purchase him for 425k, which... If he impresses, might be something we do. I don't think he's going to be at the level we need for a championship goalkeeper, but we'll have to keep an eye on him and see what he looks like. The other loney is uh, from West Ham, Frederick Alves Ibsen, who scored uh, one goal in preseason. A really good all-rounder. Not actually in our starting eleven, believe it or not. Well, not yet, anyway. He may progress into it. Uh, but... Again, there's no there's no loan fee there that we'll make to buy him. He is worth quite a lot of money. It'll be very interesting to see how he progresses because he could probably do a job in the championship. So we'll have to wait and see. Only 21 years old as well. Uh, it could be an interesting one. And then Callum Doyle is uh, the Man City youngster. Our key player, apparently, which is really impressive. Um, we are going to be playing him as a centre-back, as a ball-playing centre-back for Sunderland. I don't, I, yeah, I, was gonna, I highly doubted there was going to be a loan fee on that that we could purchase. But overall, I'm I'm quite happy with how the squad's looking. I do think we'll probably be recruiting in the on the deadline day and throughout the season to try and make us better. But we need other players to become available. We have got a couple of bids in for other people, but we'll leave them to see if they get uh, announced in this. What we've gone for is a 4-1-2-2-1 or a 4 3, three however you want to describe it. And... We're starting with Cameron Stewart, uh, Ross Stewart, sorry, up front as a target forward. The The plan is we get it into his feet. He holds it up for the on-running Pritchard as a Mazala. Uh, Gooch as an inside forward on attacking. And Ilanga, who is now here, is going to be an inside forward on attack as well. So the, the main three goal scorers, I think, for this team will be Gooch, Pritchard, and Ilanga. Stewart is going to be more of a... An Emil Heskey sort of player, I think. Hold the ball up, get other people's into play, see what he can do. Ramirez is going to hold it tight, um, and we can mix it up with what his support duty is, whether we'll go to defensive or support, like depending on who we're playing against. Evans is just going to sit in front of that back four, chasing the ball down, trying to get the interceptions and win it back. Uh, Sir Kim, we're asking to push on a lot more over Elanga. O'Nine's just going to sit behind Gooch a little bit more and try and just give the ball to Gooch to get him to do the work. Uh, Doyle and Flanagan at the back, Hoffman in goal. Flanagan, I've given Flanagan the nod over the West Ham youngster. I just feel like he's got a, he's a bit more of an all-rounder and can fit into how I want to play. But it is a strong squad. Uh, we are suffering from a few injuries here. McGeady, Hume, Jordan Wills and Ricky Jade Jones as well. But I feel like, yeah, I feel like we're in a good position with the squad. I do. We're going to be playing short passing, try and control the ball. If you've watched my series before, that is how I try and like to play football. I want, I set up my teams with football that I like to see play. Um, the only thing we've done here, we've gone for a lower, or sorry, a higher line of engagement with a lower, sorry, higher defensive line with a lower line of engagement to try and compress this middle. We want to win the ball back here. When they get past this sort of lower line, Go and press them, win it back, and if they go over the top, then we do have a pretty decent sweeper keeper in Hoffman. Now that's all the good chat done. Let's actually go and see if it pays off in the game. So into the dressing room we go. The first sort of team talk in a proper game. Um, I, I feel like we should be winning this. It's Wigan. Wigan are a good team, but stick to the plan. Stay patient. We'll be fine. We know we're going to keep the ball. We are playing... A hopefully quite possession heavy tactic. It's what we want to do. Get out there, make it work. Elanga's motivated on the left hand side. Um, and why have we got a guy there in literally pajamas? Why have we got like a physio on the pitch? Anyway, um, the only risk we've got is Pritchard. Is the the physios have said limit into forty five minutes, so we're going to see how it goes. We'll be back for any action if it occurs. It has occurred straight away. Here is Pritchard. Over top, looking for Ramirez, who we've left on the automatic at the moment for this game. Ball in Stewart with a header. Unlucky. That is the target forward. He is six. He's six foot two, so he's not a giant, but uh, he does have decent, decent attributes. And that's a long boy. I thought Flanagan's done well. Here's Doyle into Pritchard. Doyle again. Good ball out to Alanga. Pritchard into Sirkin, and Sirkin will overlap Alanga more than 09 on the right hand side. Alanga's going down to the byline. Puts a ball in. Looking for Stewart again. Gooch will keep it alive. He's got 09 there. Back in Pritchard's there, and he's missed. 
Oh, it's such an easy opportunity. Oh, Hoffman with a long ball forward. That is not what we ask him to do. He's meant to be playing it short out from the back to either the full backs or the centre backs as Kerr is on it. Into Watmore. Watmore to Power. Power goes up to Edwards. A good bit of possession here for Wigan. Edwards back to Cousins. Cousins into one. See, we're not going to press them when they've got it at the back. We're, we're, we're just keeping it compressed in this midfield. I quite like that. Care into what more. We are, we're giving them a lot of time. And if they bring it up, then we press. It's basically a half-court press is what you'd call it in basketball. As soon as they get to the halfway line, you get on them. And you try and close them down. As Edwards looks to go around the outside of Sirkin, who's got some loan interest in him. But I've got no, I've got no interest in loaning him out. Powers, Cousins, this feel like it's going to have a goal at the end of it. Because they've kept the ball really well. And it is a goal. It's James McLean. Um, oh, hang on. Ref is disallowing it. Ollie Yates has blown his whistle. I think it's offside. It's, oh, it's very close. Very, very close. But uh, it stays nil-nil at Stadium of Light as Power put it in. It was a good finish at the near post. It felt like a goal was coming from that. Corner ball then. Pritchard swings it into the back post. There's a header back across. Ilanga's there. I think he's offside as well. It was Corey Evans who headed it back across. And Anthony Ilanga has been ruled out as offside. The header back, and he is he is just offside. So it's a goal ruled out for each team. I haven't done the set-piece trick at the front post or anything like that. Um, you know, I don't know if it's an exploit or if it's good tactics, but you, we, we could do that. Brilliant. Both teams are in white. We put our good performance according to XG as our total XG was greater than our opponents. Okay, so we're this white. I don't, this looks like it could be a bug, you know, because I feel like ours should be red and there should be blue. So I have no idea why that's happened, unless it's a... Uh, color blindness thing where they're trying to separate it out but oh well we'll see how it goes right into half time then nil nil in the first game of the season uh i'm not gonna be negative i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm very happy with how we dominated possession because that is what i want us to do as a team i do want us to get the ball and i want us to dominate in it and wear teams down and make it work the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up ramirez here and we're gonna change ramirez into uh, a central midfielder on support just to make sure we know what his role is. The automatic one, I think, on positive, he might push up a bit too much. But uh, Humphreys has a free kick for Wigan. It's close, but it's not the one. Okay, on the hour mark, I think we're going to make our first sub here. Lyndon Gooch not having a good game by any accounts, really, on a 6.4. Really not playing that well. We don't really have a sort of like-for-like -like replacement. We could move Alanga over and bring on Aidan O'Brien. I think that's what we're going to have to do. So Gooch off, O'Brien on. Uh, and then we're going to change O'Brien to be an inside forward on support. And hopefully he'll cut in and Sirkin will be able to push up a little bit more. So they're not going into the same sort of spaces. So Sirkin with the header into O'Brien. It was a long goal kick from the Wigan goalkeeper. And Sirkin, oh, that's where we want him to get forward. But that was not a good pass. Edwards back to Cousins into Bayliss. Bayliss looking long and over the top. It's a, there's a foot race here. Sirkin does well to get back. Good ball out from Hoffman to 9 Now picks out Sirkin on the left. Sirkin goes back to Doyle, the ball-playing centre-back, up to O'Brien, flicked into Stewart. He holds it up and puts it into the path of Langa. And Sneer Langa shoots! Oh, it's just past the post! Oh, the youngster from United looking good. So, 10 minutes to go. I know a rule is you never change your back four, but we are going to take off Flanagan and bring on Bailey Wright at the back for this one. I'm also very tempted to say, you know, Ramirez, has, he's got old legs. He's got old legs. So, I think it's going to be Elliot Embleton. I, although Winchester was the guy I started in this role to start with as a box-to-box, -box, and then we changed it for Ramirez when we signed him to just a normal central midfielder. Elliot Embleton, he's more attacking. I feel like, yeah, let's go Elliot Embleton for Ramirez, who's had a good, solid debut, and he's going to come on as an advanced playmaker on, uh, on support in there. Try and get him the ball and make things happen. That's what we need to do. I'm tempted in future games to make Ramirez a playmaker. He can do it. As Pritchard has a free kick. Round the wall. It's off the post. Oh, my word. We've gone so close in this game. That's a foul, ref. That's got to be a foul by James McLean. And um, he's been warned by the ref. But three minutes to go. I don't think we're going to get another chance here. We've dominated the game. Yeah, we've dominated the game, but a nil-nil. Not bad for the first game of the season. We have absolutely outperformed them, to be honest. 1.3 is our XG. And I do think one of the issues we're going to have is scoring goals. And I am on the hunt for, a, a, I think, a target forward that can do the job better than Ross Stewart. Maybe a taller target forward or a stronger target forward. But I do feel like we need someone. And yes, before you ask, 
I've already approached Andy Carroll, so that's not an option. He said no because he's a Newcastle fan. But uh, and that, I'm not lying. He actually turned us down on a free transfer because he's a Newcastle fan. Yeah, if we look at the numbers, we should have won that. So despite the result, trust the process. We'll be successful if we keep that up. I think I think that's a fair thing to say. We played well. We dominated the game. What was it? Fifty nine percent possession. I think we had. If we can, if we continue and look at the stats, we had we had good chances. We've hit the post. Uh, Alanga's put a couple wide. Both teams had a goal disallowed, but. You know, I feel like that's not not a bad game. Yeah, XG, we've smashed them. Shots, we've had more. Possession, 56%. The, the game went in the, the sort of style and shape and system that I wanted it to. It's just we couldn't get the goal. We couldn't get the goal. As uh, Ramirez makes, and, and we've made a number of debuts as well. So it'll only get better as as we play more games, to be honest. Um, yeah, not bad. I really want to sign Joel Valencia. He looks cracking, but... They want too much money and we can't afford his wages, so it's not going to happen. Okay, so for the second game of the episode, we're taking on Hull in the Carabao Cup first round. So uh, a pretty interesting draw. We actually get a team from the championship, so it'll be a good test to see where this squad is now. It would be useful if we had drawn a, a lower league team, because I'd like to get through and get some prize money. But we take on Hull. It'll be an interesting game. We have made one more signing, though. We've confirmed the signing of uh, centre-back Yaroslav Yach. From Crystal Palace, just a good all-rounder centre back, really. Six foot two, good strength, not bad pace, but jumping, reach, heading, marking, tackling, positioning, all decent. Um, and he probably will come in into the starting line. At 65k, I thought it was a a good little deal we've got there. We've got uh, Crystal Palace also paying three thousand pounds of his wages as well. So all in all, I think a pretty a pretty good deal. He's pleased to be here. Uh, he's a good player. He comes in as, I think, our second best centre-back. Yeah, behind next to Callum Doyle. And it now gives us the option that we can move Callum Doyle to left-back if we want him to be attacking. So it does free up. Sir, if Sirkin gets an injury, we've got more options. It just it's just bolstering the squad that little bit more. And I think that's, I think that's pretty useful to have. So going into the game... Um, Jack is going to be on the bench for this one. He's not going to come straight into the team. It's the same 11 that started the last game. The only difference we're doing is we're going to put Ramirez as this playmaker. I want to see how it works to try and feed him the ball and let him dictate it. Because at the moment, we don't have a playmaker in there. And if you look at the data hub when it's available, which we'll dive into a bit in this series when it's there, you normally do see that if you have a playmaker, there's a lot more arrows going towards him and the team try and fit the ball through him. So that's what we're going to go with today. Uh, Yaroslav Yak will need a number. So we are already, we've got a lot of numbers assigned. Uh, he can get the number 50 and we'll go into it. In the 4-3-3 wide, Hull might penetrate our high line a little bit more. We might give them a bit too much time and space on the ball by not pressing their defenders. But I still want us to play how I want us to play. So, I mean, this is a match we should be winning. I'm not too sure I agree with that. Let's um, enjoy the match. Go and play your own game. Stick to, Again, stick to the plan. Stay patient. We'll be fine. I feel like you've got, I've got to keep reinforcing that message to say, this is how we want to play and it's going to work. So stick with it. Trust the process is the key. Uh, trust the process. So straight away, we saw they were shifting around formation. You can see straight away they're playing quite defensive. So hopefully it plays into our hands and we can actually break through them. Half an hour gone. Hull have got a bit more of an advantage. No highlights, but we've done dropped down to balanced just because I saw Hull were getting a, a slight advantage. But it looks like it could be a first half of absolutely no highlights. And it is a first half of absolutely no highlights. So brilliant. Again, what is with these graphs? Why is it, why is it not showing actual colours? I'm going to assume we're white and Hull are... But why are we not red? Why are we not red? That doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. So analytically, I don't think there's too much we can draw from the game. Neither team are really pushing up high. You can see how compressed we're playing in the middle. They've got a lone striker who's not really getting in behind us. And Anthony Langer's not having a very good game. So it's uh, it's not the best. Where's the passes? I want to see what we're doing with passes. So let's just go... Um no, passes completed is all I want to see. Now, I want to take off all of these. So, passes completed. Yeah, so look, 99 is Ramirez. So, he's got a number going backwards and forwards with the uh, with the centre-back there, Tom Flanagan. Doyle's trying to get the play going. We're going out. We're going back. We're going up to the... Oh, well, I don't want to see theirs. I just want to see ours. Um, how do I see just us? Yeah. I, oh, there we go. Sunderland. I knew there was a way you could do it. That's what we wanted to see. So yeah, okay. So the ball is going from it's going Flanagan to Ramirez and back generally, and then we're struggling to push anything else forward. Maybe we actually need see because that oh nine and 
yeah, Onan and Gooch are just getting in each other's way. We need Gooch to bugger off up the pitch a little bit more and give us an option really high up. And I'm wondering if we make him maybe bring on an out-and-out winger in there. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, we can win it. Keep the hard work up. I do agree with the assistant on that one. I feel like we need to, you need to change the game for us. You've got the ability. Keep going. You know they have, you know they have the ability. I think we'll go with that one for now. And then the strikers, the striker will go with to Stuart. We'll tell him he's uh, he's really good. Yes, he's on attacking. He should be pushing up. He should be playing really, really high. Um, I don't really know what we can do to make that any better. He's sort of playing like those past that sort of put him back down here. So I don't really know what we can do to push him on. We might have to move Alanga over and bring on um, O'Brien again if he's having a poor game. But let's see what happens going into the second half. Hopefully we can nick a goal. So on the hour mark, we have a highlight. Sirkin intercepts the ball. Doyle back to Hoffman. Into Doyle again. And again, this is the, I don't mind this patient approach out from the back. Pritchard, who's just I was just about to sub Pritchard off. So this is sort of his make or break highlight. Doyle, Sirkin. Yeah, you can see... The target forward's dropping a little bit too deep. He keeps asking for feet, and there's no pass on for him. As Doyle now does find Stewart, and that's what we wanted him to do. Into Lyndon Gooch. Gooch is past the keeper. It's 1-0. And the guy that you're saying at half times had a shocker and not getting involved high enough up the pitch. We change nothing, and he moves higher up the pitch. And that's the first time in a highlight we've seen what I want to happen. Doyle bringing the ball out from the back into the striker. He turns a lovely ball through to Lyndon Gooch, round the goalkeeper, and the American sticks it home. And that is how I want my tactics to work in a nutshell. If we can't get it into the midfielders, we let the defenders bring the ball up into to the striker's feet. Great ball in onside. What a run. What a pass. And uh, Lyndon Gooch is through one-on-one -on -one round the keeper and in it goes. And we do make the sub then. Embleton is going to come on for Pritchard. We were told he should only have about 60 minutes of football so he's played over that um, already. Uh, everyone else is doing okay really. We're going to do another straight swap. It's going to be a Langer off um, and O'Brien's going to come on and then we're just going to change that to support. We'll put Facebook, uh, Facebook, Facebook, a Facebook defender back to support, fullback back to support. 10 minutes to go. And we, I'm not going to say anything. They've just changed formation. Okay, a couple of minutes to go. Um, we are just going to start dropping everybody back. Just hold on to the ball. Nothing too stupid. Two deep line playmakers in there just to hold on to the ball. No worries about that. Um, Emerson's come on not doing brilliantly. Sirkin's not having the best. We're actually going to take Doyle off for Yatch. He's going to come on for his debut. Doyle on a yellow card and not playing the best. 1-0 one up. One minute to go. We're dropping everybody sort of that we can and just leaving Gooch and Gooch playing off Stewart basically up front. As uh, the second half, we've really come back into this game. And that is going to be that. And we've knocked out a championship team in the Carabao Cup. No idea if that was their strongest team. We played really well in the second half. A great performance. What a, what a pass and what a goal from Gooch as well. And that is a wonderful way to start this series in the league proper. New fancy intro. New fancy cuts like transition screens. And a, a lovely 1-0 win in the Carabao Cup. We'll pick up a bit of prize money for that, I'm sure. And a decent nil-nil draw with Wigan as well. And you've got to trust the process. That's all this is. We've got our tactics. I know how I want to play. And I'm very keen to see us do that. And um, I'm, I'm very, very happy with what I saw in that team. We didn't create a lot. There wasn't a lot of highlights. But I do feel like we're building something pretty good. Although it's only been two games. It does feel like we're building something pretty good here. So we will leave it there then. Thank you so much for watching. It's been absolutely brilliant having you here. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your recommendations down below for strikers, target men, anywhere else you think we need to strengthen. Tell me what you think about the signings as well. But for now, I will see you next time and I'm out. Cheers.